Another thing, which is not too good about our material, and we discussed about it before, just want to repeat one more time that this material can't be bent. And always pay attention to your guys that this material can't be bent. Someone has told you, maybe okay, let's just heat it up with a light and then bend it. But no, this is strictly not allowed to bend this material. So once it becomes straight, it should be straight, it should remain straight until the rest of its uh, let's say exploitation. Yes, but uh, one more time I want to tell that always this is a corner of our ground beam. Once you put your bar here, it should have anchorage. And this is overlapping. This is strict cold because we know that in concrete, why actually we use steel in concrete? Because if there's a slab, and here is your reinforcement here, concrete works perfectly for compression. But bar works perfectly for tension. That's how they work perfectly together. Only this is only one reason why people use steel inside of inside of concrete structures. So we can conclude that here force will try to pull out this bar out of the concrete. And without this anchorage, it's going to be much more easy to do this. So how to avoid this because we can produce only straight bars. So this piece should be made first separately, let's say, made of FRP but as I told before, unfortunately now in Uganda we do not produce such sections angles, new caves and all, this, all, all other shapes we do not produce it here now maybe in future but not now but overlapping is, uh, let's say, it's allowed to use overlapping in structures so according to the uh, requirements uh, requirements, all requirements are depends on the place you, let's say, you, uh, the place you, you use this overlapping because it may be a foundation, maybe, I don't know, suspended slot, it may be any beam or whatever. It can be overlapping, it should be from 30, 35 to 60 banners of material. It means if you use, let's say, Y12. Overlapping should be 16x12, which is 720 millimeters. This is overlapping. This is the distance of overlapping of your bar. If you use FRP 8, it should be the same thing 8x60. 480 millimeters. The idea is the same. So, sometimes this is another big problem to use overlapping. It is true, but sometimes we even, as a producer, we do not recommend to use overlapping in terms of cost saving. And I will show you now the reason why. If you have a big structure, I mean, with a big length, big dimensions, where you have a one piece, 20, 30, maybe even 10 meters, it's okay. But let's, let's give you an example if we have a foot, so called foot. And this is your concrete structure here. Here somewhere should be column. Everyone knows. And this foot has dimension one meter only. Let's imagine this is Y12. Y12. Okay, 
let's use FRP. One meter of FRP, then calculating overlapping. Let it be minimum overlapping, 20, 35, 35 millimeters. Okay? Well, multiply 35 because these sections when we made of steel, so we have to calculate overlapping with the with the steel. 12 to 35. Let's just let's say round it. Approximate, approximately uh, 400 millimeters of overlapping. How it's gonna look like? <laughs> this is steel. Okay, let it be red. This is steel. This is steel, and this is only a gap of 0 0.2 meters of free space. It has no sense. Everyone knows it. You're not going to save money on this, on this structure. And most of the time, it's just uh, another problem for engineer. Okay, first we have to cut a meter, then we have to make this small thing. So in this case, this is better to use steel, guys. We, as I told from the very beginning, we do not push our uh, constructors to use our bars everywhere. First of all, we are engineers and we uh, act according to the common sense. If it, our material will help them, uh, will make their life easier, we do this. But if we know that it's not going to work, we we'll never recommend to use it. So this is an example why we're not going to recommend to use our material. Not because it doesn't work, just because the cost saving factor is not going to work for them at all here. So just forget about it. Forget about it. So this, what about bending? And bending is not a big problem. I mean, if you use uh, steel with FRP, it's not a big deal. Let's say you have a column. You have a column and you have a slab between floors which is suspended one. Always your reinforcement here is going to be look something like this. So this is going to be steel because of the deflection and this is going to be FRP. So you're going to work with uh, FRP and steel together and it works pretty cool. And for joining FRP and steel, I think I haven't mentioned it before, we're going to use binding wire. So for joining these bars, we always use binding wire, nothing special. Yes, sometimes we can use these uh, plastic ties, as we always use, let's say, for, for wires. In Russia, we use them pretty, pretty often, but here in Uganda, I think, uh, the price comparing this material and uh, binding wire is going to be not for, not for this one. So binding wire is going to be cheaper, I believe. So, so anyway, as binding wire here is available pretty widely, we can come close to use binding wire instead of, instead of ties, these ties. But this is another problem if you, if you want to use ties or whatever. That's it.